Good morning. Well, I'm cooking my brisket, and that's a separate video. But um, I also put the raised beds together, and I'm um, getting this area ready to go. Hold on, sorry. I'm getting that area to go. Now, ideally, I should have um, done this in late last year and just put paper down to kill the grass but well I wasn't here so I couldn't <laughs> um, so I'm just doing the old-fashioned dig out it's not bad I mean up here it's not that crappy clay soil so um, it's really not bad so I'm just cutting out the square I uh, here's the other bed you just lay it in there and then you you know just take that and cut around it and then you move your bed and uh, just dig it out um, I just slapped this together it's not as fancy as the raised bed I had in Texas but you know what you know it's four dollars so it's fine I stained it with redwood it looks pink I can always do it again but after time it'll age and again these boards were real cheap ideally I would not have gone with a 10 inch or 11 inch board but you know what it is what it is and I'll just work with it um, I am sloped so I will be leveling this out um, I also have this other area prepared okay so for the gut for the beds I know people don't like miracle Grow. this is only two dollars and fifty cents a cubic foot so for my raised beds and for this little bed here, which I weeded, I'm going to just mix this in just to get it going and um, take some of my dad's compost as well and all of that. Um, the containers that I'll show you in a different video, that has to take potting soil, so I have to make potting soil. Anyway, um, this is the other area. And uh, I'll be planting peas as well. Separate video. I'm going to do potatoes in a really different way. <laughs> Hopefully it'll work. <laughs> All right. Okay. It was so much easier than clay to dig out. Oh my gosh. This would have taken me forever. Well, I needed a tiller back there. But anyway, I dug it out and I've got my handy dandy little leveler because I'm sloped. I'm hoping that what I, the way I did it will get me close, but we'll see. Okay, I did have to just dig it a little bit deeper, maybe like an inch, but I think that's pretty good. Okay, first raised bed is done. I took um, the dirt out, not all of it, but a lot of it as I was shaking off the grass pieces of grass and then I mixed in some garden soil from the store with it and I mixed in dry molasses chicken manure and some little bit of peat moss and when I go to plant I'll plant um, like the broccoli I'll mix in compost right, you know, around where it's um, probably around a foot diameter where the uh, broccoli will be growing. So now we just have to do that one. This is so much easier than in Texas. Okay, here's the other bed. And that's pretty good right there. Go ahead and move this over here. That one was spot on. Yeah, that's good too. Okay, then I'll just fill in the dirt on the sides. I made it just a little bit bigger. It just makes it easier to maneuver. This is so easy. All right. I had a couple good sized pailfuls. I ended up throwing it in there as well. Lift that up. And then I'll add some more soil in these beds. 
Okay, here is uh, the placement. Actually, I'll move this over a little bit. This will be the placement for the um, cabbage and the broccoli. Um, this is a three foot by three foot raised bed. These are gonna, you know, probably fill the bed. I like the three foot by three foot versus the four foot by four foot that I had in Texas. I really didn't like the extended reach in the middle. Now I know I'm not gonna have to reach in the middle, but you know, with some other types of vegetables you grow, getting into the middle wasn't always that easy. But um, this is plenty of room. Um, I'll do six inches. I'll just make sure it's at least six. I may scoot it in just a little bit. I may go to like eight. Um, that should give them plenty of soil. It's just, you know, they're going to spread out a lot. And then here, the Jade Cross E Brussels Sprouts. Woohoo! And the, um, that's cauliflower. Um, so I know I started these really early and they're pretty big. Hopefully, they should grow okay, um, but we'll just see. And then I put a little lonely cabbage back there. I'll probably put another couple of broccoli. I want to put peas and beets and radishes and lettuce and probably some some of the potatoes here. And then I got to do my other potatoes, which is going to be a separate video <laughs> on my little experiment. <laughs> um, so, okay, got to get planting making my little concoction. I got my earthworm castings. This is my concoction that I'm going to use when I plant the uh, transplants in around the soil. The ever popular rock phosphate. A couple handfuls of that. This is only a zero three zero, so I just throw a handful. Gotta go grab the compost from my dad's compost bin. I don't know if you could see this, but he has awesome compost. It's so good. Um, we'll have to get compost from the pile too. It's time to probably do that in a few weeks, but anyway, he's got really good compost. Um, we'll use de this definitely to put into that compost tea, but I mean this stuff's great. So I'll put a few handfuls of this into our concoction as well. And then um, I brought my organic fertilizer. I just put them in these big jars so I could take them and make sure they came Connecticut with me. I had a huge bag, but this is 642. But you know, with all the other amendments, that gets the NPK up. I don't really want to put too too much nitrogen, especially for the broccoli. I think that was part of the reason why my broccoli did not produce, or I don't know if it's possible to get a sterile broccoli plant, but that happened to me one year. Just beautiful, massive broccoli, but I didn't get anything. So anyway, we're going to put a couple handfuls of that in there, mix it up, and get to the planting. I am also going to do these garden patch grow boxes. My father has three of them, and he's had really good luck with them. So, and I got the, it comes with a fertilizer, but for a little bit more, um, you can get organic fertilizer. So I ended up doing the organic fertilizer. So we bought we bought 10 because if you buy 10, it's discounted. And I wanted a bunch because I like to grow a bunch. Um, and my dad has three of them, so he has six total, and I'll have seven total. Um, plus this, and then I got some cloth grow bags. I got a bunch of stuff I could use. So it'll be a hodgepodge. It'll be all experiments. So I wanted to show you this. This is the compost for Supreme Force products in Harwington, Connecticut. So if you're anywhere near Harwington, um, this place is awesome. It's, you know, bulldozers and uh, tractors and, you know, they do a lot of commercial work, but they also sell to the public and they just started 
bagging the compost for this year. Look at the compost. Um, and I, you know, at the website, you can check the website out and they talk about what their compost is made out of. A lot of leaves, um, which I love composted leaves. And, um, you know, there's some twigs in here too, but I don't know if it, if you can really see how nice and dark this is. But um, when we went by last week, just to kind of check the place out, they were so nice. They took us back there and the guy in the big tractor, which is the size of a house practically, um, pushed some aside off the mountain. You could see it was like, you know, when it's composting, it's nice and warm and steam was coming up because it was kind of chilly last week. So that was really exciting. This is fresh stuff. This isn't, you know, when you buy it at the store, you don't know how long it's been sitting there and there's there's nothing wrong with it. You could grow, but this is better and it's $2 a square foot, a, a cubic foot, only two bucks bagged. And I don't have a pickup truck or I get the bulk. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that real quick. So I'm going to make a potting mix. I've got vermiculite. I've got just a little bit of peat. I don't like peat moss too much. I'm only using a little bit. And then um, horticultural grade perlite. Um, you know, now I regret doing the per perlite. Now this is extra coarse because, you know, it looks like styrofoam. So I'm not sure I'm a big fan, but Brendan Bacon Soda <laughs> did his experiment. If you do half vermiculite, half perlite, it really came out better than just using one or the other. So that's what I'm going to try to do. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and mix this together and start filling those containers. I'm not planting anything in them just yet because that'll have my tomatoes and everything. So um, I want to just get it all set, put some dry molasses in there um, to get the microbial uh, little microbes happy. They're already happy. I can, I could tell <laughs> from when I saw it steaming. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing. And then I'll cover it with a tarp because we're going to get rain. All right.